now available in paperback and e-readers, Spellbound, a darker shade of black. Get your copy today at your favorite online bookseller. Yesterday, the lawyers for Bill Cosby presented their arguments as related to his appeal in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. And I'm hoping that the judges in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court are a bit more objective than the judges in the lower courts as related to Bill Cosby's case. Now, I believe that the judges in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court need to overturn Bill Cosby's conviction because this case against Bill Cosby clearly is a travesty of justice and it also leads to a legal precedent that has made life not only difficult for Bill Cosby, but for men all across this country. Now, the case of Bill Cosby as related to the alleged sexual assault of Andrea Constan, as, as I see it, is a complete travesty of justice, and this whole case, as I see it, needs to be completely overturned. And the reasons why this case needs to be overturned is because the prosecutor, Kevin Steele, who led the charge to prosecute Bill Cosby, had a clear case of bias, and that clear case of bias led to him leading this campaign to prosecute Bill Cosby with malice of forethought. And the reason why I'm saying that your Kevin Steele has malice of forethought is because your Kevin Steele ran his political campaign to become a district attorney in Philadelphia, all with the goal of getting a conviction against Bill Cosby. And when you have a prosecutor having a campaign running on the goal of getting a conviction of an individual, that is a case of clear bias and it's a case for a malicious prosecution. Because a prosecutor, when they are out here, they have to be objective, and their goal is to get a conviction of an individual based on not only the facts of the case, but also related to protecting the laws of this country. And your Kevin Steele was not interested in protecting the laws of our United States Constitution. He did not go out of his way to try to preserve Bill Cosby's constitutional rights in his campaign to maliciously prosecute him. And this was a violation of Bill Cosby's rights under our United States Constitution, which guarantee him innocence until he is proven guilty and also giving him due process under the law. And Bill Cosby was not presented as innocent until proven guilty, nor was he given due process under the law because your Kevin Steele had run on the campaign to say that he was going to convict Bill Cosby. And when he did this, he showed, again, malice of forethought, and he showed clear bias and created a malicious prosecution of Bill Cosby because this denied him the ability to get due process under the law and be seen as innocent until proven guilty. And this also denied him his fourth or sixth amendment right as related to due process under the law where he would be tried by a jury of his peers and those peers would be presented with evidence by an objective prosecutor who was presenting facts as related to evidence. Now, your Bill Cosby also needs to have his conviction overturned because of the numerous judicial errors inside of this farce of a trial. And this whole trial had numerous judicial errors, and the first was the Bill Cosby having himself self-incriminated and violating his Fifth Amendment rights because your Kevin Steele used a deposition in a civil trial as part of his case. Now, in a previous civil trial, your Bill Cosby made some statements and he was assured 
by the previous prosecutor and the person running the civil trial that this, this deposition would not be used in any sort of criminal proceedings. And this was documented and signed not only by attorneys, but it was signed off by the prosecutor and, uh, and in the past and was, again, an assurance that this whole deposition would never be used as evidence against him. So we have a lower court judge allowing a deposition into a criminal proceeding, even though prosecutors in the past had clearly stated, we will not use this as evidence against you because this is self-incriminating and violates your Fifth Amendment rights to self-incrimination. So you're Kevin Steele using this whole deposition as part of his argument is a judicial error and this judicial error leads to an overturning of the conviction right by itself. And with this compounded with the malicious prosecution, both of these arguments are clear for a overturning of this conviction because we have a prosecutor who has a clear case of bias and a clear malicious prosecution because running a campaign or the goal of convicting an individual clearly shows that this prosecutor is not acting in the best interests of the state. This prosecutor is clearly biased against an individual, and that's not the prosecutor's job to go after individuals. Their job is to go and try to prove the state's case as relate based on the evidence, not based on feelings. And a taking an in a deposition that was for a civil trial and using it in a criminal trial, that is unethical and that's something that a, 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 a district attorney should be removed from office and as I see it should be disbarred legally because that's just completely unethical to do to take evidence that you know is not going to be to incriminate someone. That's just completely unethical as I see it. Now in addition to the malicious prosecution and the using a deposition that should not have been used. There were several witnesses that were brought in to this whole prosecution that should never have been brought into this whole case. And those witnesses were these women who were brought in to make statements against your Bill Cosby. However, none of these women witnessed the sexual assault of Andrea Constead that was alleged to have happened, and none of those women saw Andrea Constead or had any contact with Andrea Constead to witness any sort of sexual activity between herself and Mr. Cosby. And these were witnesses that were allowed to testify as relate by this judge in the criminal trial based on hearsay and in the United States, as related to our court system, you are not allowed to use hearsay as a testimony against an individual who is being charged with a crime. Hearsay is not witness testimony, and any judge in any court proceeding who is ethical is going to throw those witnesses out because hearing that somebody said or did something is not a witness that is somebody who cannot be their information cannot be confirmed by police detectives nor can their testimony be confirmed as a factual observation as related to the case so if you're going to present witnesses those witnesses have to be actual individuals who have witnessed the actions that are alleged, and that wasn't done in the case of Bill Cosby. Now, it is said that these the prosecutor wanted to bring in 19 of those witnesses and ultimately only used five, but none of these individuals saw the sexual assault that was alleged by Bill Cosby. So their witness, these witnesses, their testimony in and of itself 
should have been thrown out, but it was allowed by this judge. And allowing this into the court, that in and of itself, again, is another reason for throwing out this case. And when you compound all of the judicial errors and the bias of the prosecutor, this whole case needs to be overturned. And this case needs to be overturned because this was not a case about getting justice for Andrea Constan. No, this was a case about Kevin Steele and his vendetta against Bill Cosby. And that's not how our courts work. An individual who cannot use the courts to have push a campaign to push their own personal vendetta against an individual. That is what we fought against in the Revolutionary War. We fought against King George using the courts to railroad people, and that's why we had a revolution here in the United States, and it would be a travesty of justice to allow this conviction to stand because it stands against everything our United States is all about. Our Constitution guarantees all people the right to be innocent until proven guilty, and it guarantees us due process under the law, and it guarantees us that we would be tried not based on hearsay and somebody's personal biases, but on facts as related to evidence that is related to witnesses who have actually seen an incident and actually seen what transpired during a trial. Moreover, you have to bring in concrete evidence within a reasonable amount of time. And it was unethical of this prosecutor to bring this case back up almost 15 years after the previous prosecutor declined to prosecute and waited until next to the last day of the term a statute of limitations running out to bring this case to trial. So there's a lot of ethics issues that are going on as related to this case and the appellate judges on hearing this case, it seems like they were looking at the facts as related to the evidence that was presented in this case. And that's something I'm happy to see with this appellate court is that they're looking at the law and they're looking at the interpretation of the law and I'm hoping that based on interpreting this law objectively, they will give Bill Cosby an overturning of this conviction, which has led to a very dangerous legal precedent here in the United States. Now, this Cosby conviction, it not only railroaded Bill Cosby, but it also changed our standard of law here in the United States. And that changing of the standard of law here in the United States changed our standard from giving us the concept of innocent until proven guilty, and it took us to the standard of trust and believe. And the standard of trust and believe was something created by the feminists who were a part of the Me Too movement. And these feminists, like the women who were a part of the Jim Crow era of racism here in America, they want us to trust and believe a woman based on her word and her allegations that a sex crime or a sexual harassment or a sexual assault took place. And they don't want us to follow the concept of our United States Constitution which guarantees an American citizen innocence until they are proven guilty, a right to a speedy trial, and due process under the law. No, under the standard of trust and believe, all a woman has to do is make an allegation, and once she makes that allegation, then law enforcement is supposed to arrest that individual prosecute that individual and convict that individual solely on her word. And when you think about how dangerous that standard of trust and believe is, 
it's almost similar to, or I'd say just like what happened in the case of Emmett Till, where your Carolyn Donham made an allegation against Emmett Till, and then these beta males then went out here to get Emmett Till and then torture and murder him, all based on her word. And in addition to Emmett Till, there were hundreds of thousands of black men who were lynched based on the word of a white female, and towns like Rosewood and Black Wall Street were burned down based on the trust and believe standard of white females. And we can't have a society run on the standard of trust and believe because under the standard of trust and believe, no man would ever be safe because all it would take is a simple allegation by one female and that one allegation could practically lead to a man losing his job, losing his reputation, and even worse, losing his freedom because that one allegation could be used just to not only get a man arrested, but have a man prosecuted and convicted and put in prison solely on the word of a woman. And that's why it's important for the Pennsylvania Supreme Court to overturn this conviction because this isn't just about Bill Cosby. This is about the rights of every man in this United States to be able to get due process under the law and be seen as innocent until proven guilty because our country is run by a constitution and is a nation of laws and we need the Pennsylvania Supreme Court to interpret the law in a correct way so that we can go back to a standard of laws and we can go back to a standard of innocent until proven guilty. We need the Pennsylvania Supreme Court to overturn this conviction because it is not safe right now for any man to go out here and just do basic business because all it takes is one woman making one allegation and a man can lose everything, including his freedom, solely on the word of a woman. And we should not live in a standard of gynocentric Jim Crow where men are second-class citizens in a nation that they build, and that standard would destroy our economy and our ability to do build anything because if we do not have a standard of law where men are innocent until proven guilty, then men have no incentive to live their lives and pursue things that make them happy, and they have no incentive to go out here and build businesses or build an economy in our country because they would fear losing everything all based on the allegations of a woman who could have them arrested, prosecuted, and convicted and destroy everything that that man built all because we're supposed to trust and believe everything that she says. And we can't have that standard in this country because that standard is, again, a complete betrayal of everything that the Founding Fathers fought for and in the Revolutionary War because we fought to get past the King, who King George, who was using this very same standard of trust and believe to go out here and prosecute people based solely on his word. So the standard of trust and believe needs to be shut, taken down, and it's up to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court to, as I see it, go out here and send a message to everyone that everybody, male or female, must live under the standard of the United States Constitution, and everybody must follow the laws of the United States Constitution, and every prosecutor must follow those laws and be objective, and that's the message that must be sent 
by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court as related to the case of Bill Cosby. Because in the case of Bill Cosby, this is not just about a black man having his rights violated. This is also about a group of feminists who want to use the use this prosecutor's judgment to further violate men's rights in this country. And the standard of trust and belief is the same standard that lynch mobs used to murder black, not only black people in Jim Crow, but also whites who that disagreed with the mob justice of Jim Crow. And again, we here in America, we say we are about the standard of innocent until proven guilty, due process under the law, and Bill Cosby's case is about due process under the law when you think about it objectively and protecting due process under the law and protecting the standards of our United States Constitution as related to things like being innocent until proven guilty and a man having a right to a trial as related to a jury of his peers not a kangaroo court that was designed to railroad a black man and railroad a black man based on the feelings of a malicious prosecutor who needs to be, as I see it, disbarred and held accountable for destroying our Constitution in his obsession with trying to go after this celebrity in an effort to elevate himself. This man needs to be held accountable and this conviction needs to be overturned because this conviction is a complete travesty of justice and this conviction is something that needs to be erased from our, our from the records because this conviction is a complete betrayal of everything our country stands for and it's a complete betrayal of everything that every American out here stands for and if you as I see it this this conviction it just it needs to be overturned and I'm hoping that the judges of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court when they hear this case now that they've heard the arguments they will overturn this conviction and get this country back to a standard of innocent until proven guilty and send a message to all of these feminists that we are not going to trust and believe anything a woman says because every citizen in this country has a right to be innocent until proven guilty and they have a right to due process under the laws of this United States Constitution. Now, if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can pick up, uh, you can um, donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to try some of my SJS Direct publications, you can pick up all of those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them on Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available on paperback and Kindle Unlimited, ISIS, Imitation of Life. The Goddess Next Door helps a young black girl overcome racism during the era of Jim Crow in this golden age ISIS series adventure. Get ISIS, Imitation of Life, in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today.